projects. In this video, we are going to explain about a project titled Breast Cancer Classification from Histopathological Images Using Resolution Adaptive Network. So now coming to the introduction part. Breast cancer continues to be a substantial worldwide health issue impacting numerous individuals annually. The timely and precise identification of the condition is paramount for enhancing treatment outcomes and patient well-being. In recent times, the realm of medical imaging with a specific focus on the examination of histopathological images has witnessed remarkable progress in aiding the diagnosis of breast cancer. One of these groundbreaking developments is the Resolution Adaptive Network, an advanced method for categorizing breast cancer based on histopathological imaging. So now coming to the objective part for this project, the main goal, main goal of the Resolution Adaptive Network for breast cancer classification from histopathological images are elevated diagnostic precision. The primary aim is to enhance the precision of the breast cancer classification when using histopathological images. Second here we have streamlined analysis. Another important objective is to make the analysis process more efficient. Histopathological images are often characterized by high resolutions which can make manual analysis a time consuming and a resource intensive task. So now coming to the requirements part, here we have two types of requirements that is hardware requirements and software requirements. In hardware requirements, operating system as windows is required. Processor i5 and above, minimum 4 GB of RAM is required, hard disk 20 GB and above. Coming to the software requirements part, Anaconda 3 is required and Visual Studio Community version is required. So now coming to the flow project, here first we have importing the packages. In this module, necessary libraries and packages which are NumPy. Pandas for data manipulation, SQLearn to facilitate machine learning, and Matplotlib and C1 for visualization are important. Then second here we have exploring the data set. Examining the data set to understand the structure, content, and characteristics. This step often includes reviewing the data statistics, its size, and sampling because they inform the further analysis. Then we have data processing, utilizing the Pandas data frame to manipulate and organize the data. This can involve tasks such as data cleaning, handling, missing values, and formatting data for analysis. Next here we have visualization using C1 and Matplotlib. Creating visual representations of the data using C1 and Matplotlib, popular Python libraries for data visualization. This can include generating various tasks and blocks to visualize data patterns and relationships among different columns. Next here we have label processing. Converting categorical labels often in the form of text into numerical values using a label encoder. This is typically required for machine learning models that require numeric input. Next here we have feature selection algorithm. Selecting the most relevant features or attributes from the data set. This step can involve using a correlation algorithm with, de with decision trees to identify important features. Separate data sets X and Y are created with and without the selected features. Then we have data split to train and test. Splitting the data set into two subsets are training and the testing set. The training set is used to train the machine learning models while the testing set is evaluating the performance. Next here we have building the model. Creating machine learning models for prediction or classification. You mentioned building models both with feature selection and with all features. This can include various models such as random forest, decision tree, k nearest neighbors, logistic regression, voting classifier which is a combination of KNN, random forest and a decision tree, XD boost classifier, ADA boost, SGD classifier, stacking classifier which composed of random forest, SGD and LR and a weighted stacking meta classifier incorporating random forest like GBM and MLP. The next year we have training and building the model, training the machine learning models by the training data to enable them to learn patterns and relationships in the data. This is the critical step in the machine learning process to ensure accurate predictions. Then we have class framework with SQLite for sign up and sign in. Implementing a web application using the class framework, a Python web framework and SQLite database for user registration and authentication. The next year we have user gives input. User provides input which can vary depending on the specific application's requirements. Next we have the given input is pre-processed for prediction. Pre-processing the user's input which may include tasks like cleaning, formatting or translating the input into a suitable format for the prediction. Then we have trained model is used for prediction. Employing the previously trained machine learning models to make the predictions or provide responses based on the pre-processed user input. And the last one here we have final outcome is displayed through front end, presenting the re results of the predictions generated by the model to the user through a user friendly interface, which can be a web page, mobile app, or another platform. So, now coming to the execution part, to execute the project, first we need to open the code folder. So, here we have a folder which is named as templates. So, this folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. 
I typically include files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. Another folder named as static, this folder cons contains, consists of the files related to the CSS, JavaScript and the bootstrap files. The next here we have .ipynp file which is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, class and office all in one thing. It allows the users to write and execute code in individual cells making it a popular choice for data science. Next here we have app.py file which likely contains the information related to front-end logic. It could include code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. Then we have signup.dp file. This file appears to be the database file which is used to store the information. So now just click over here and copy the path. Open the anaconda prompt. Type the cd command followed by a space and the space the path over here and now hit the enter button. Now type python app.py and now just hit the enter button. After running the app.py file, the class name of it was the application link locally at the default address and port 5000 ls configure new friend link. So here you can see that the link has been posted over here. Just copy this link and paste it into any of the browser. Here I am using Chrome. Just paste the link over here and now hit the enter button. So here you can see that this is the home page for the free scan so, These are the features that deep learning, image processing and the artificial intelligence. Here is a button for sign up, just click on this button and enter your username, your name, email id, phone number and a password over here for doing the registration. I have already done the registration so I am clicking on sign in button. Just enter the username and the password over here which you have created while doing the registration and simply click on sign in button. So you can see that it is asking for uploading the image over there. Click on choose file and let you choose the image from this. So here you can see that we have to choose one image from this. Suppose that I am choosing this image and now click on open button and here click on upload. So scrolling down below here you can see the prediction or the result we have got. The pre-scanner type is winning. So depending upon the image you are uploading over there, it will detect the pre-scanner type over here. So let's click on the about button. And here you can see that there are many different graphs that are confusion matrix, precision and recall curve, ROC, cross validation and ROC exhibit. So depending on this graph, we will we have got the accuracy, precision and recall over here. There is a button for sign out, just simply click on this button and you can successfully log out with this. So now coming back to the conclusion part. In conclusion, the application of the resolution in this adaptive network for pre cancer classification from histopathological images represents a significant leap forward in the field of medical imaging and cancer diagnosis. To sum up the utilization of the resolution network adaptation, adaptive network for classifying breast cancer from histopathological images signifies a substantial advancement in the domain of medical imaging and cancer diagnosis. The prospective advantages of this technology are profound. Through a substantial improvement in the diagnostic precision, the resolution adaptive network has the capacity to identify breast cancer in its early stages, often enabling more effective treatment. So here we have completed with our project. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.